Hi everybody, this is a quick video to demonstrate the latest updates to MIDI Cake Art. Version 1.x.4 brings a new mode, 6 modulation shapes, 4 new parameters, some options for the stop button, and a couple of bug fixes. You can download and install a new firmware from midicake.com forward slash download. Let's start with the new drone mode. ARP's current pad mode is designed to play notes continuously until the chord changes. Drone mode is only subtly different to that. For any chord changes that share the same notes, in drone mode those notes will be held on and not re-triggered. It's ideal for smoothing out those chord changes and keeping sounds sustained while still evolving you with your chord progression. You can still change the number of steps, just ensure your ARP is in poly voice mode. Let's take a look at the new modulation shapes. Let's set ARP1 to chord mode and the number of steps to 4. Our modulation is set to steps and to a sine wave running over one bar. As we increase the amount of modulation, you can hear the number of steps increasing and decreasing in sync with the modulation shape. There are six new shapes. These are positive ramp down, negative ramp up, positive half sign, negative half sign, positive and negative half triangle. Let's select the half sign. And now you'll hear that the number of steps only increases. and we can invert that. Let's increase the number of steps and see how that works. While we're on the subject of modulation, there's a new parameter called modulation toggle. Previously, to disable modulation, you had to reduce the amount to zero. Now you can easily switch the modulation on and off. Pretty neat. The next parameter lives on the step button. You'll notice that all the parameters now have a new common menu system so that you can see which parameter on each button is selected and how many parameters there are on each button. It just makes it easier to navigate. Back on the steps button, the pitch filter parameter is intended to separate the number of steps from the number of notes in your current chord or scale. In simple terms, it filters the number of notes that are sampled from the current chord. For example, if we choose a 7th chord, you can see there are four distinct pitches in our sequence. The C, E, G and B flat. However, if we set the pitch filter, for example, to 2, we can reduce that number of sampled notes. Our ARP still plays the same number of steps, but it now only plays two distinct note pitches, which would be, in this case, C and E. This offers the ability to create counter melodies to a second ARP, which is playing a sequence based on all the available notes.
it's a little more powerful than just setting the number of steps. Compare that same sequence without the pitch filter and the steps reduce to two. You see, we're now only getting two notes on Art 1. Let's put it back on and see the difference. Under the Note button, there are two more new parameters. The first is Note Lock. This allows you to specify the exact note that the arpeggiator will play. You can select from C through to B. ARP1 is now no longer affected by the note you play, either on ARP or with a keyboard. Combined with other ARP channels, this can create some very discordant effects, but it's also good for a bass line that stays constant throughout a track. And don't forget drone mode, of course. If you want a note to play throughout your track, well, now you can. Let's turn note lock off for now. The next parameter is scale lock. Can you guess what this does? Similar to note lock, this limits the arpeggiator to a specific chord or scale. You can select from ARP's list of common chords or scales. Again, this fixes the ARP to the scale and is unaffected by the chord types you play though it still tracks the root note. You see, it no longer matters what chord we play on the keyboard. It of course follows the root note, but it always plays the scale locked chord. What is the point of these locks, I hear you ask? Well, for one, it's interesting, and it opens up a number of avenues for creativity. Secondly, though, it's critical for percussion. On ARP 3, let's lock the arpeggiator to note C and the chromatic scale. Let's also lock the octave at minus one. Now, no matter what we play, this art will always play C2 to B2 in the chromatic scale. Let's set the steps to 16 and the MIDI channel to play some percussive samples. Now if we select or edit a custom bounce, an ARP is now a simple drum machine. Let's play some percussion. And we can modulate that too. For me personally, these new lock parameters represent features that I've wanted to see in ARP for a long time. On the surface, they might seem restrictive, but in combination, when you have other ARP channels playing, it can make for some very unusual sequence patterns, and that's part of ARP's DNA.
The last big feature in this update adds some options for the behavior of the stop button. Under the global menu, there's a new option called stop button behavior. By default, the stop button ends playback immediately. But now you can set it to stop at the end of the bar. Or you can set it to stop on the first step of the next bar. This is a little automation that can help resolve those sudden stops in a nicer way. And it means you don't have to worry about timing your stops perfectly. Finally, there are a couple of bug fixes. Note, limit and octave were not playing together perfectly. And now they are. There was also a crash when sending all notes off to certain MIDI devices on USB host. This too has been resolved. There are no known bugs. If you find any, please let us know via email or our support forum on midicake.com. That's it for this update. However, we've been working on two big features that didn't quite make it in this time. Therefore, we're planning another firmware update around September time. That will have these exciting goodies for you. Keep an eye out on social for some teaser videos. Thanks for watching. All the best and keep making music.